This is Beringia, a vast landmass surrounded by ice that connected Asia and North America. Long glacial periods have caused sea levels to fall, which formed and reformed Beringia many times over the past 2.5 million years. But to fully understand the formation of this region, we must pull back, not just back in time, but in space. Three planetary orbital fluctuations, called Milankovitch cycles, affect how much solar radiation reaches the Earth. These change the shape and distance of our planet's orbit around the Sun, the angle the Earth is tilted towards the Sun, and the extent to which the Earth wobbles while it spins. Each cycle has its own timing, which creates alternating climate cycles here on Earth. Depending on the timing and the position of our planet, these cycles warm or cool our climate. Glaciers grow during cooling phases, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. During the Ice Age, this occurred many times. But how do glaciers form? Glaciers are created when large amounts of fallen snow compress over long periods of time into thick, dense sheets of ice. Glaciers grow and melt every year, but when they grow faster than their annual melt and continually expand, the process is called glaciation. Beringia avoided glaciation because high mountain ranges blocked precipitation from the Pacific, creating rain and snow shadows. During these periods, the entire Arctic Ocean was covered in sea ice, which also helped keep Beringia cold and dry. Ocean depths closer to land are relatively shallow due to continental shelves. During the Ice Age, so much water was locked into glaciers that sea levels receded by as much as 120 meters. This exposed the continental shelf that connects Asia and North America, forming a land bridge. Today, much of the land bridge is only about 80 meters underwater. Land bridges formed elsewhere on Earth. The British Isles joined mainland Europe. The various islands of Southeast Asia were linked. Australia was also connected to its surrounding islands. All of these required broad continental shelves and were critical for dispersal of life between continents. With the continental shelf exposed between Asia and North America, the land became tundra and dry steppe grasslands. Animals adapted to this environment began moving between Asia and North America across the land bridge. Glacial cycles determined what types of habitat existed. During interglacial periods, when climates were warmer and wetter, the Bering Strait was flooded by rising sea levels, and animals adapted to boreal forest conditions prevailed. During glacial periods, when climates were colder and drier, grassland environments developed and grazing animals adapted to a steppe tundra environment were more common. Humans lived in western Beringia for thousands of years, but starting around 20,000 years ago, humans began moving across the land bridge towards North America. By 14,000 years ago, they had established sites as far eastward as the Yukon, such as the Britannia Creek, Bluefish Caves, and Little John sites, sometimes within only a day's trek of the ice sheets. Toward the end of the Ice Age, the continental ice sheets began melting. These meltwaters form huge glacial lakes with a network of drainage systems that are still evident today. The meltwaters reached the ocean, and over the next few thousand years, seas gradually rose and once again severed the land bridge. A drastic change in vegetation began as the environment transitioned into the modern boreal forest. Many animal species, such as woolly mammoths, that were adapted to the glacial steppe tundra conditions disappeared. Today, the Kluwani or St. Elias ice cap is the largest remnant of the Cordilleran ice sheet. Outside of polar regions, more glacial activity remains in this region today than anywhere else in the world. The many cycles and environmental factors that have led to Beringia's many formations and declines shows us just how dynamic Earth's climate can be.